Hey, it's Mark Podolsky of The Land Geek with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's podcast, we have a really interesting guest. I'm super excited to dive deep into um, how she helps people get to that next level. But I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host. You know him, you love him. The brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm a little, uh, I'm a little intimidated. I'll be honest. Yeah. Our guest is a little intimidating. Let's talk about her. Amira Alvarez is the founder and CEO of The Unstoppable Woman, a global coaching company helping entrepreneurs, empire builders, athletes, creatives, and rising stars in all fields to achieve their dreams and goals in record time. She made a quantum leap, going from barely making six figures to making 700,000 in one year, then on to seven figures and has lived to tell about it. I can't wait to hear the story. She knows exactly what tactical strategies and mindset shifts are required to get out of your own way. How often do we talk about this, Scott Todd? Getting out of our own way. Live life on your own terms and master the art of achieving any goal you set your mind to. Amir Alvarez, welcome. Thank you so much. Why am I intimidating, Mark? You just are. I don't even know. I, maybe it's just that you're unstoppable. I, I, you know. But yeah. You know. That being said, let's let's just rewind the tape, and I'd love to hear the story how you broke through. Absolutely. So, point of clarification: I have stopped many times, just like many people. And the whole concept of being unstoppable is that you figure out what your strategies are for stopping, how your particular unique pattern, your subconscious program that's running to get you not to change, not to go to that next level, not to face your, your internal demons, right? How you uniquely stop and you figure that out. And then you figure out how to create a, a, a new self image for yourself so that you become someone who actually moves through those blocks instead of hitting that, that glass ceiling, that glass wall, whatever you want to call it, the thing that you, you hit up against, even though you know what to do and how to do it, you still seem to self-sabotage in some way. So that's the concept is like, we all have our unique pattern for stopping. How do you do it? And then how are you going to remap it so that you don't do that anymore? And then you, you get to have the big, the big wins. So, okay. My story, shall I just dive right yeah, into that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's just get meta with it. Like, so how okay. did you do it? What were your fears? How did you break through your limits? Oh, I had so many fears, Mark. And, and it, it really, you have to own it. Like, I think I was someone on the outside who looked confident, who was, you know, going for it. I think a lot of high performers, people who are going after bigger goals or maybe non-traditional ways of um, wealth generation, income generation, whether they're an entrepreneur, they're doing the land move, right? They, they have some level of confidence, but inside they are, are there's self-doubt, there's, am I doing the right thing? There's all sorts of stories that, that keep you, you, uh, stopping. My, my big one was overwhelm. My big one was trying to do too much and thinking that my self-worth came from doing all the things. And it kept me like my one, like I had some strategies for growing when I was making, I, I, my last year before I made my big quantum leap, I was making 138. And my strategy was work hard. And when that didn't work, my next strategy was work harder. Like I just was, I was a workhorse. I was like, I had work ethic. That's what I could do. I didn't know what was working and what wasn't working. Like I didn't understand the causes for the results that I wanted at all. All I had was the spaghetti technique. You know, I'm going to just keep throwing spaghetti at the wall, see what sticks. Um, And it wasn't sustainable. I had, I had crossed the six figure mark. I had done that as a solo entrepreneur, but I was working 12 hour, 14 hour days. So work harder, just like sheer hours was not going to scale. I mean, anyone who can do math knows that that doesn't scale. 
And so I had to really take a look at, you know, hey, there's there are successful people out there, people who are more successful than I am. And let's not undermine the success that everyone has had up until now, but they have bigger dreams, right? They have things that they're going for that they haven't yet achieved, okay? And we don't wanna be trapped in the good enough um, trap where you let yourself off the hook because look, my life doesn't suck. That's great, your life doesn't suck, but come on, you have those bigger dreams. Other people have done it. How, how did they do it? What did they actually do? And so I went and I studied success and the sort of the non-traditional mechanisms for success because I knew what to do, but I kept finding myself not doing it. Uh, so it wasn't the business strategy, though there are tactical things you need for sure. It was all inner game, Mark. And when I learned one, how my self-image worked, how identity worked to keep me either playing at the same level or breaking through. And, and when I learned how to change that, and, and then fundamentally, and this might be a little woo for your audience, we'll see. I learned these universal laws that are like the law of gravity, right? Like they work whether you understand it or not. Like, I don't know, do you understand how gravity works? I don't understand how it works. I could not teach someone how gravity works. But I know when I drop this pen, when I let go of it, it drops to the ground, right? And it always does that. So when I learned these laws, it explained how life worked for me. And then I could start working in alignment with it. And then, you know, like the, the introduction you gave, I, I made a quantum leap. I went I five times my income in one year. You know, I went to 700. And then I've crossed seven figures very rapidly and we keep growing as a company and it's been really exciting and powerful. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, it's interesting because I think a lot of people think that, you know, like as you think about success or growth or you see people that are doing it, you want to think that the, the rise is at, like at a, at a, like an angle, right? Like you, a lot of people think it's like a plane just taking off. But the reality is, is that there are levels, just like a plane, that there's levels along the way. So when you take off, you need a runway, okay? So you're gonna have to have a lot of power to take off. And look, if you don't have a lot of power, it's gonna take you a longer time to take off. And that's not always a bad thing. Sometimes it might take you a year to take off, especially like in the land business, Mark. We see it all the time. People take you know, that first year and they're like, well, my passive income's only this amount of money. It's like I'm hovering close to the ground. Great, yeah. Keep going, keep going, because it's, uh, at some point it starts to take off like a plane does because you got you get momentum behind you. But then what happens is just like a plane, you level off at certain altitudes. You level off here for a little bit. And that doesn't mean that you can't go higher. It means it's OK to level off before while you adjust a little bit and then scale to, to go back up. And Mark, at our last boot camp, um, there was a question asked of the um, of the ask the geeks and the, the wisdom behind that question was well the, the wisdom behind the answer was so great I, I, I still remember it what the question was is hey when when you fall off the bandwagon when you quit where's the first place or how do you get going again and my first answer was go back to the basics right that's what I was thinking I didn't provide the answer uh, another land um geek provided the answer and what they said was find out figure out wh why it is that you stopped and address that topic because if you stop because of this you stop because you know uh you didn't like this we'll figure out how you can navigate around it and then go back at it again but that's the way to do it i thought that was genius no absolutely so so amira you work with all these people, entrepreneurs, athletes, creatives. Is there a theme that you see? My, I would, I'm just going to take a guess that the biggest stumbling block or limitation that the majority of your clients have is either fair, fear of failure or fear of success. Or I could be totally off, but I'd love to know if you see a, a common theme and then how do you help people sort of break through that? hundred percent. So it is some sort of fear. Everyone has their own unique version of 
fear. Some, some it's fear of success. Some is fear of failure. Some it's fear of rejection, um, being thrown out of the tribe. Like, the, and, and you could categorize that as a fear of success, right? Like if I right. really make great money, will my neighbors who I barbecue with every Sunday throw me out of the tribe because they think I've become too much, right? And then I don't want to do the things because that's not, I don't know what's going to happen to my, my community, my belonging. And, and fundamentally, we are creatures who are driven by our subconscious need to keep us safe and alive. And any change, anything that's a deviation from what you've done already and survived, your subconscious will think it's very black and white will think, Oh, that's potential death. Let's figure out how to stop him. Let's figure out how to stop her. And it won't do it in like the billboard on the side of the road that says, Hey, Mark, I'm going to stop you from doing this because I'm afraid that this is new and different and you might die. Okay. It doesn't say that it causes you to, um, have your engine fail. So you need to spend the day in the, at the mechanics instead of um, making the proposal and putting that in and getting the deal. Right. It right. comes out. It, it's a fight with your, your spouse or your partner. It's, it's some other thing. Your, your team falls apart. Okay. Something is going to happen to stop you and, and you get distracted and deflected from your mission and you wonder why, why can't I execute on this? And, and this is what happens on a very insidious level. You know, your subconscious works for you and against you. If you, if you learn how to work with it, then you can set a, a vision for it and it will execute on it. It will figure out how you get there. But it can also, if you have these little blind spots, can really um, sabotage the execution of your plans. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, do you have a tactic or, or a story that you can share that you can sort of help us see this in, in, in a practical term, like how you help somebody get over the subconscious fear? Yeah. So first of all, I'm going to ask someone what they really want. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those clarity questions that people think that they know what they want, but it's kind of vague. I want to make more money. I want a better relationship, but this isn't precise. We have no there, there to go. So the first place that I start with someone is getting really clear on what, they, what they're going for, whether it's an income goal or some, some life goal and getting precise income goals are great because you can get really precise. I want to make a million dollars. I want to make a hundred K cash flow this year, whatever it is. Okay. Like you can be super precise about it. That's what I love about numbers. Um, but what causes people to be lacking in clarity there is that we're not taught to really claim what we desire. Okay. So in asking that and walking people through that, that is the first step in getting past some of the subconscious programming, because think about this, when you're an infant, a, a little boy, little girl, and you want something. And you, maybe it's a piece of candy. You want that candy. It's sweet. It's yummy. You want it. But your parent, your mother or your father is like, you're going to get addicted to sugar. Uh, your teeth are going to fall out. Whatever. Has, has some reason why you, you shouldn't have that piece of candy and takes it away. And in doing that, that and, and you go for it again and she's upset or he's upset. And so she, she snaps and says, don't, don't eat the candy. That's not what you should have right now. That's only for dessert. Some, some kind of uh, intensity comes up. And in that moment, generally speaking, the parent has cut off the love from the child momentarily, okay? The child knows instinctually as a species that if the love is flowing, I have security, I'm gonna survive. If the love is not flowing, I won't survive. So what's the meaning that we create over and over again, over the years of childhood? It's not okay to want what I want because when I go for what I want, someone who has 
my life in their hands says it's not okay or not right. So then we don't claim our big goals. What your, your clientele has big goals. They need to really claim it and to move through that. And then we have to set a vision that's different than who they've been already. Okay. That's the next step that like, if, if, Think about this. If who you are right now has been getting you the results that you've been getting right so far and you want different results, you need to put a new cause into effect. You need to be someone different to get different results. So we now need to vision who you need to be on the inside and the actions that you need to take and map out a business plan that includes both. Okay. Does that make sense? That totally makes sense to me. Um, I don't think it makes any sense to Scott Todd, but I'll just check in. <laughs> well, it makes perfect sense to me. And this is kind of what I was saying about leveling off, right? Like you level off because what got you to that level can only sustain you so far. And then you have to regroup your tools. Okay. Like you've got to, this is where always be learning comes in lifetime learner, because ultimately I think that you can only get so far with what you have. And then you're like, okay, I've spent all of the energy, all of the knowledge I have time to go back and regroup. So there's always a leveling off. And then now you get ready to launch again, and then you see the next evolution. And again, there's a runway there. The next evolution can take you even higher. But one, you got to know that you can go higher. And then two, you've got to you've got to go get the skills that will take you to the altitude that you want to go to. No, a a absolutely. Absolutely. So, Amira, what's the, some of the worst advice you see or hear given in your ex area of, of expertise of helping people get to that that next level in, in life and in business? Yeah. Well, I hope this doesn't offend you. I don't know what your perspective on this is. We'll see. Right. But the the level of methodicalness and overthinking that happens for people really slows them down. They, it, it, you've heard, obviously, everyone's heard the uh, paralysis by analysis concept. And you do need to have a certain level of, um, you know, analysis to make sure you're, you know, conceptually, you're going in the right place. But the idea that you have to have every single duck in the row, you will not make a decision and that opportunity will be gone. OK, be, making quick decisions is one of the key components of uber successful people like the, the 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 billionaires out there. They are making decisions very quickly and they've learned to make decisions quickly, not by always making good decisions. OK, they've made a ton of mistakes, fail fast. OK, because then you learn to triangulate Oh, when I took that in, I, I interpreted it this way. That's not exactly correct. I need to amend that. But you wouldn't have been able to do that if you hadn't gone through the process. You go through that process all the time and iterate on it. You become someone who makes quick decisions. So if I make a decision in 15 minutes and it takes you three weeks or three months to make the same decision, who's going to do the most deals? Who's going to be able to... Uh, scale the the quickest, okay. Now that's not an argument to say don't do your do your homework, but how quickly can you make a decision and not be afraid of making a mistake because you will. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you actually. I, I'd be interested what Scott Todd thinks, but um, one of my favorite business books is Ready, Fire, Aim, and it's all about that that process of you know execute. And then, you know, like you said, fail fast and then iterate. Scott Todd and I are both um, proud owners of two spite stores. So we got really upset with the companies we're working with. And we're like, that's it. We'll do it like that quickly and did it and executed on it. We didn't know if it was going to work or not. We didn't know if we were going to make any money or not. But we just were like, if they can do it, we can do it. And we did it. And there was about as much analysis as I think I just said to Scott, that's it. I'm doing this. <laughs> that was it. Some of the um, greatest things come through your intuition, come through that download that just happens. This is a yes. I have to do this, you know, and, and, and to follow that, it's such a freeing 
experience. It, it, it keeps you out of the trap of like, what are other people going to think? What happens if, you know, it just is. And you can, you can start trusting yourself and not being dependent on things outside of yourself so much. Yeah. Scott Todd, what, what's your take on that? Well, I do think, I think that what a lot of times what happens is you get an idea and then you overthink it. Okay. Like I get an idea and then I'm like, well, your internal brain starts to tell you all of the reasons why it's not going to work. Your brain is a perfect excuse maker. It really is. And I think what, what people who kind of know that they just say, shut up, I'm just going to do it anyway. But you know what the other thing too, Mark is, is people hate to fail. They really hate to fail. And so because they hate to fail and it could be failing because of an ego, it could be failing because of money, because they hate to fail. Ultimately, what happens is they they sit on the sideline. They know they know that they can do something else, but knowing doesn't equate to doing. All right. So I think that you've got to just accept the fact that, OK, I fail. Big deal. You know, big companies fail all the time. Big companies, they they shut down something. Remember this little website called, I don't know, Google Plus or something? It's I like do remember it, yeah. They, they ran at it. They finally said, eh, forget it, we're moving on. Because it's a draw on their resources. And I think that if, you, if you're really being honest with yourself, you should really look at your business as you're failing on some of these things and go, didn't cut it, it's out. It, stop, stop doing it. Uh, if you can sell it, sell it. If otherwise, just shut it down and move on with life. And that's just the way that it is. And sometimes, sometimes you you go do something. I did this last year. I went and I did something. I created something. I put it. I thought it'd be great. I just I just did it. Right. I just put it out there. And the key moments, those key things that should have just happened, never materialized. And then I realized, like this should have taken off already. Like this should have been done. And it wasn't done, and I literally just shut down the website. Gone. It's gone. People ask, like, what happened to it? Gone. D didn't cut it. And that was over a two-month period. I spent money. I lost some money, lost some time. Time, But you know what? At the end of the day, I tried something, and I realized I didn't want that or it didn't work anyway, and move on. No, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's, look, it's like skiing, right? If you're not falling when you're skiing, you're not skiing hard enough. So Amir Alvarez... We're at that point of the podcast and your mentorship has been invaluable, but we're going to ask you for one more bit of wisdom, your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? So fundamentally you have to manage your mind. Okay. But everything that we're talking about here is, is how we control our thinking. The choices we make in our thinking determine the actions that we take. So, um, use your greatest power which is your power to choose to choose in favor of going for it okay being unstoppable you know just just make that decision take that risk and yet people have issues around that so one resource that we have to help people with that if if they're interested in this is our morning mindset club and i take you through how to change your, your mindset and how to achieve your goals faster than you ever thought possible, how to set them, how to really work with them, how to identify when you're getting in your own way, you know, so, so that you're not in the forest for the trees, you're getting some outside information on that. And uh, if people are interested in that, it's totally free. You can go to the unstoppable woman.com slash free stuff. And the Morning Mindset Club is there and men are wel welcome, even though the, the name of the company has the woman in there. Uh, we have lots of men in our community as well. Awesome. I mean, I'll join as long as Scott doesn't. Um, so uh, before we get to Scott Todd's tip of the week, I have to give a little shout out to our sponsor, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Start building that passive income without renters rehabs, renovations, or rodents, and go up that mountain of land investing mastery with Scott Todd as your Sherpa, who's done it thousands of times. He will take you up that mountain quickly, safely, efficiently. Oh yeah, and that tuition investment, it ain't gonna cost you nothing. We guarantee you're gonna make back that money 180 days or less. Just show us you did the work. Learn more, go to landgeek.com 
forward slash training, schedule a free consultation. TheLandGeek.com forward slash training. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, unfortunately, I, I mean, I'm shocked because I had this plan and I'm shocked that this is not the, the that I'm not recommending something that is coming from Amera, but it's along the same topic. OK, it's I, I tried. I really tried. But here it is. Check out this book, Mark. It's Believe It, How to Go from unesti- unesti- Underestimated to Unstoppable. Be unstoppable. <laughs> Believe it. it. How to go from underestimated to unstoppable. You know what? It's got 649 ratings at five stars. Wow. Okay. We got a lot of unstoppableness here. Um, fantastic. Unstoppable. Well, speaking of unstoppable. And Jamie I mean, Kern Lima is amazing, by the way. Yeah, yeah see? I've, I've never even heard of her. Oh, you my God. Now, she started twice. a makeup company with her husband in her apartment and like spent the last money that she ever had. Uh, on furniture and then did something that no one believed was possible, which was be sort of a heavy woman and not a model and uh, sell makeup and built a billion dollar company in like, I don't remember the number of years, like seven years, like an incredibly short amount of time. Wow. Tremendous. Yeah. And just a, a plug, I did a whole breakdown of how she did this on our, um, podcast which if i can find um we have a ton of of resources there but we it's a great episode anyways i just went squirrel on you no fantastic well my tip of the week is also about being unstoppable go to the unstoppablewoman.com and check out amir's podcast the free resources and break through and again you don't have to be a woman to do it so there you go because Scott, look, let's face it, we have about three women in our audience. Oh, I think we have more than that, Mark. I Maybe really five. No. no, I think we have more than that. We th- yeah, we do, we do. Um, I wanna thank the listeners and remind them the only way, the only way we're gonna get an Amira Alvarez to deal with our shenanigans is to do us three little favors. You gotta subscribe, rate, review the podcast, send a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're gonna send you for free. The $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money, 30 days or less. All right, Amir, are we good? We are good. Scott I love Todd. It. Thank you for having me on. You're welcome. Scott Todd, are we good? We're good. Let's do this. One, two, three. Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. <laughs> Amir's like, I had no idea they were down like that. <laughs> do you want to do it again? I'll, I'll join in if you want. <laughs> Let's do it. One, okay. two, three. Let's let freedom, freedom ring. ring. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgate.com and www.scotttodd.net. Rate and review the podcast and email support at thelandgate.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.